I like what you have here. This is this is good. So, but thanks for having me. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate that. All right. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Kazimir Panawash Belinsky, uh, the PB of PB Track and Field, and I'm here today to kick off our very first episode, um, our very first blog, our very first podcast, our very first all of it, uh, with someone that I couldn't think of anyone else better to have right now. Um, he's the fastest 200 and 400 meter runner in the state of Wisconsin ever on the high school level. And we're just so honored to have him here. He's doing incredible things in the collegiate level right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kenny Bednarik, thank you so much, Kenny, for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. And I'm uh, thankful that you reached out to me so we can, you know, talk about this, all this stuff, this crazy stuff that's been going on with, you know, what's happened to me this freshman year. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just glad that you got a hold of me and we can do this. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I know I talked to you about this before we started recording, uh, but a little bit of background on me. So my name is Kazimir Panawash Belinsky. I used to run at Arrowhead High School. I was a 400 and 200 meter runner, uh, just like you, obviously not as fast. Um, but track and field has been my life. And I always thought that high school track and field deserved more attention than it gets. I mean, it's such it's a sport that everyone on the inside knows how amazing and incredible it is but i think people on the outside have a hard time reporting it or have a hard time sharing just how cool and amazing of a sport it really is um so that that's my bit and for those of you who are listening and watching right now uh who don't know much about kenny i, I don't know what's wrong with you um but <laughs> the, <laughs> kenny like i said is the fastest 200 and 400 meter runner ever in the state of wisconsin a uh, runner from rice lake and now he's doing incredible things on the college circuit um, at Indian Hills Community College and mm. uh, is currently your, uh, is it junior college national champion in the 400 meters, correct? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Should so been, tell us. Should have been too, but, I, you know, inj an injury popped up. Yeah, uh, so let, let's talk about that briefly. Um, what uh, what happened uh, that weekend? For, you can tell us about the four, tell us about the two, whatever you whatever you want. Uh, so when I was coming in, uh, the meet, my mindset was to take a, take, I want, because like the event that I was hot in was the 200 and I wanted to, I like, I told flow track a while back saying that I wanted to run a 19 indoors and there's only been one dude in history to do that, as you probably already know. So, and I thought I had the potential to doing that. And, um, you know, I, I came in just saying I would take it easy on the four and, you know, just go off in the two. But, um, I mean... I mean, that's kind of what I did, but uh, the schedule-wise, it didn't work out with my body and all that stuff. Uh, like, it was the schedule was kind of crazy. Uh, the first day, you know, I did good in the four. I took it easy, and then I blew up in the two and took it easy at the last 50 and still ran, like, a good time. So, you know, the finals was going to be good, but, like, there was only, like, an hour in between that uh, the four and the two the first day. And then uh, the second day, there was only, like, I mean, it, it wasn't like 10 minutes, but it felt like 10 minutes. Like, I got done with the 400, and I kind of cruised it, you know, and I felt good. I wasn't tired or anything. And then, like, but I, you know, I went to go back to the trainer to get some recovery time and all that stuff. And then as soon as I got on the stuff, like, she was helping me out, and they literally called us up to go run again. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, so my body just tightened up and cramped up. It was a yeah. cramp. But yeah, I, I do. I know. I know how that turnaround is. It's sometimes really tough. I, I don't know what would be worse if you had the 200 before the 400 or if you had the 400 before the 200. It just it is what it is with the schedule. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure plenty of people completely understand, um, you know, you had to do what you had to do. Um, so but you're OK and everything. You're going to be yeah. good to go for outdoor. Yeah, I'm going to be good to go for outdoors. I'm just like I said, I'm just taking it easy this week, just roll, rolling my cast out and hamstrings and making sure to take ice baths and you know i'm just doing what i can to get ready for start practice again next week but cool. uh, other than that, i'm good still cool. healthy so your experience transitioning from from high school to college um now that you've gotten a full indoor season under your belt as you're transitioning to outdoor are there things that feel similar to high school or, or is it very different um what would you have to say in talking to our high school listeners who are, are following you right now um for me i think this it's it's different because i mean obviously we start training a lot sooner than high school and we started in august like we started in august so we did a lot of our hard workout hard workouts earlier in the season in august to fall it was basically fall training and 
then I had my first meet in December, and obviously I ran good on that. And then after that, um, you know, we had the whole indoors. Uh, but, I mean, practice and all that stuff, I felt like it's more – I mean, I think it's more, it's better because I'm doing a lot more than what I did in high school. I mean, not bashing my, my coach, they did what they could do, but like, you know, I'm doing like more things like working on core and in high school, like, I didn't think that was important, but you know, working on your core is very important and it helps you, you know, make yourself be stable and it also helps you uh, finish stronger when you're running and all that stuff. So there's just a bunch of new things that I learned just from this one, uh, these two months of running indoors and, and all that. So, um, you know, uh, core, core is important and weight room is important, but I also learned, like, you don't want to lift too much, obviously, because you got to correlate uh, the lifting and the track running and all that stuff. So, you know, uh, when I was younger, I used to think that, um, you know, I had to lift heavy, heavy, heavy in order to get more, more power and be faster, but that's not the case. You got to right. uh, well make it well balanced and all that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look at Usain Bolt. He's not like the most ripped guy in the world, but he's certainly really strong and obviously amazingly fast. Um, yeah. And I've seen guys who can lift a lot actually be slowed down by all the extra muscle they're carrying around. So mm -hmm. that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we'll so I, I we'll come back to um, outdoor college and stuff like that. But again, this this show is uh, primarily targeted at at high schoolers. So. Um, we we want to be able to include them on the conversation a little bit. And I actually have a few uh, questions from some high schoolers who are really excited to hear that we were interviewing you. Um, you know, we have some uh, little mini super fans. Um, so first, I'll just, we'll go through them real quick. So the first question is from Ben Nelson. He says, can you give a brief overview of what your typical week looks like training-wise? And that might be a little bit vague, um, but if you, I mean, like a 30-second or minute overview of what your typical week looks like. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, we start off the week with uh, Monday where uh, I, we usually do block starts and very not, I mean, not that much. I mean, we usually like take, you know, we warm up, do block starts, do accelerations, and then Tuesday, um, Wednesday we hit the weight room I mean like I said before we don't like lift heavy or anything we do a lot of reps and then Thursday it's, uh, we get a, like a, a good run in like sprinting like uh, let's say one week I did uh, 200s indoors like four of them four or five of them and like in between I would run you know a 60 no not 60 but a 50 sprint back and forth with, you know, a three-minute rest or something like that. And uh, Friday, I mean, usually we have a meet that... Do we have Usually, <laughs> usually we have a meet that... Usually we have a meet that week, so then we, we go off and then, you know, compete. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, oh, another question by Ben. What do you typically do pre-race to prepare? Some people have like a, a song they listen to over and over again. Some people, you know, when they, they jump up and down in the blocks, do their little funny like leg slapping routine. Like what what's what's your thing? What do you do to get in the zone? Um before I get in the blocks? Or just getting ready for a race. Either um, probably not as much the blocks, but what do you do to I make prep? Make sure to uh have a playlist and just, you know, I mean that's just songs that I like you know, that have a good beat and, and rhythm to it. So I, you know, listen to rap or all that. And I, I usually, when I get to the meet, uh, as soon as we get there, we drop our stuff off, uh, warm up. But I don't do a whole warm up because obviously I'm going to race later. So then like an hour before our, I begin to compete, I will do a warm up for about 40 minutes. And then I would listen to music. And then after that, you know, just get in my game and just try to clear my mind and all that. Cool. Any songs in particular? We actually have a, a playlist on our website that's all like songs that high schoolers have submitted. Is there anyone in particular we should add? Uh, I mean, when I started listening to, um, you watched uh, Creed 2? I haven't seen it yet. I really want to, though. Uh, well, I started listening to that playlist because, I mean, it's a boxing, but I mean, that feels like it kind of gets me in my zone, like the whole playlist, like the few songs that are in there. And then I listen to some J. Cole and all that. I mean, I don't really have a particular song. I just listen to I just listen to it. 
Cool. We'll have to give that uh, playlist a, a listen, throw some up on the, the playlist. Um, all right. Thank you so much. So another question by Seth Ray. What or with the level that you're at, what keeps you motivated? Uh, I mean, I... I mean, I never thought like I knew what I'd be. I would get to this level, but I didn't think I would get it to you know this uh, this fast. But uh, I mean, what keeps me motivated is knowing that. I mean, obviously, right now, like I just been blowing competition out of the water, but you know, I know I'm not the top dog. So, you know, knowing that I'm not the best. <laughs> You're close. You're very close. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but knowing that I'm not the best, you know, there's still people out there, you know, that I can still race and that are better than me and all that. You know, I just motivates me to do better. Um, because, you know, I just want to be the top dog and, and I, I don't know, just, I got a special talent and I like to use it and, you know, I don't want to waste it. So for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, so this is a question. I'm sure everybody's going to be asking you this and okay to not comment, um, from Joel Shelp. What are your plans for after outdoor season pro D one? Um, obviously, you, you know, you can uh, say as much as you want or as little as you want. I mean, obviously, pro is an option. Uh, I mean, all the doors are open right now for me. But, um, you know, I, I I just been thinking about it, but not too hard. But I, uh, by the end of outdoors, I'll, you know, I'll decide. I mean, it's 50-50 right now. I mean, it just depends on how the year, the year goes, you know. If I end mm -hmm. up getting a really good coach at uh, the, ne uh, the next school I go to or, you know, this school, if I decide to stay, um, you know, that would, just, that would play a factor in it. And then, and also, you know, depending on how that pro stuff, how it works, you know, if something good, good really comes up, then I might, you know, take that route. Cool. Thank you so much. I'm sure people ask you that all the time, yeah. uh, but <laughs> I, I wasn't going to, but it's one of our submitted questions and, That's you know, okay. it's on people's minds, you know, people mm -hmm. are interested in that. Um, so this one's actually from my coach. I don't know if you ever had a chance to meet uh, Arrowhead's Chris Harriet at all when you're at Rice Lake, um, but he asked... How was your experience of being an athlete from Rice Lake, Wisconsin? How has it helped you uh, to compete at the highest level this year? So what from Rice Lake has transferred over to you at this uh, level? I mean, I guess being in Rice Lake, it's a small town, and there's not much to do. And that kind of helped me focus on everything, you know, because in Otumwa in this place is basically the same thing as Rice Lake. There's not much to do here. So, I mean, it's just helped me to focus and actually, like, do what I need to do instead of being sidetracked. And, um, I mean, I feel like that's the only thing that's really, uh, helped me the much is that, you know, I'm more focused. There's not much, much, not much distractions for me. And there wasn't much in Rice Lake either. So it just, it's just, you know, helped me have one track mind. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Those are our user submitted questions. Um, and people, I'm sure they really appreciate you answering. So the, I, the rest of this interview, I want to have a little fun with it. Um, I'm sure that, you know, you're going to get interviewed a ton in the future. And I think there's going to be plenty of people who, you know, pretend that they know you and maybe put on a front. But I want this to be fun. Like, I, mm. we obviously have never met. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. But I want to get to know, and the people watching, listening, want to get to know the real Kenny Bednarik. So what? when did you get into running, man? Like, when did it all start for you? Was um, it in middle school? Was it high school? It was actually elementary Really? Um, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if anybody. I mean, there's some people that know, but I'm actually originally from Oklahoma. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I started off there, and I'm adopted. I got adopted by my mom uh, at the age of four, and in elementary, it was like first grade where we actually had, uh, actually competed against schools. Like it was actually like, it wasn't like any club or anything. Like it was actually like the real deal. Like. Uh, you know, my school versus your school, is, it was it was like that. Uh, but I started in the first grade, and, I mean, I mean, I just, like, I didn't really do it to, like, like, I didn't have the mindset as, you know, as a kid to be like, oh, you know, I'm better than you and all that stuff. So I just liked running. So, you know, that was just something for me to do. And, you know, it just started off from there. Cool. Right on. And did you play other sports? I thought I saw, in just doing some research, that you also played football at Rice Lake as well? Or did you yeah, play other I played sports? Football. Yeah, I started football in fifth grade, and then I took two years off, and then I went back in eighth eighth grade at the middle school. Cool. Right on. And uh, when did you realize, specifically with track, 
that you had something really special going on. I mean, I'm sure you're an athletic guy overall and could play a bunch of other sports, but when, when did you realize with track? Uh, I would say, I mean, freshman year. I mean, I knew I had, you know, amazing talent just from, you know, knowing that when I came in, like, I didn't expect anything, you know, I was just a freshman. And then all of a sudden I was at state and I had a chance to, you know, be a freshman that won state in the four and the two. But, I mean, that didn't happen. But, I mean, it was good it didn't happen. But, I mean, um, yeah, freshman year is when I really realized, I mean, I ran a 47 the first year. So then we all knew there was something special. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can only, man, I can only imagine that feeling. I, so like I said, um, in my experience running, uh, the fastest I ever ran open for was 48.8. And so to do that freshman year of high school, man, it just, I mean, that it's just incredible. Mind blowing to me. I love it. Um, so, oh yeah. Uh, so this question is when you were running in high school, you were, I mean, obviously on some level, you were in a league of your own, um, you didn't really have too much strict competition, but was there anybody say out of state? that you were like keeping your eye on or, or were there runners that you followed and tried to compete with, even if you weren't running next to them? Um, well, first off, I, can I tell you like a runner that I, that was actually good in state? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you remember Kyle Thomas? I remember the name, uh, but well, not, I mean, not many details. Tell years, me about him. He went to uh, river Valley, but uh, we're really good friends, but um, he, he almost got me in the two uh my junior year and sophomore year i mean he's a he's a really quick dude and talented dude uh where's he running now uh, i don't think he's running right now i know he went to dubuque but uh i think is the coach kind of just like i don't know what happened i don't really know but he injuries popped up and he he's back up uh in wisconsin trying to get get back to it right now i mean we've been exchanging texts and all that stuff and i'm you know, he's just trying to get back into it and trying to make sure he stays healthy this time. But in outdoors, you know, I would always uh, look at Jamal Walton. Um, the big person I always looked at is Tyrese, but I didn't know who he was until I started running at Junior Olympics uh, my sophomore year because I went down to Jacksonville, Florida, and I mean, all the, all that experience was crazy. And he ran some race. I think it was the 200, and you know, I heard I heard everybody screaming and you know gasping. And then you just see this kid that's you know a freshman zooming, running like a 20 point something. I was like, holy! But yeah, uh, yeah I had my I've had my eyes on him a lot, a long time. And I kind of wished I raced them, but I never had the chance. But I've I've had the chance to race Jamal Walton and um, Elijah Goodwin. Um, and those are the twos, those are the twos, those are the threes, uh, you know, that I, those two people I've raced, but, you know, Tyrese Cooper, I wanted to race the most. Nice. Thank you for that. That's cool. Um, I, I think I saw on your Instagram when you did the, the senior spotlight meet for Wisconsin, um, it made me think that there's, there's obviously a couple people that were pretty happy, uh, you were in division two instead of division one in high school. And I think, I saw you mention something like Justin Katarik or something was giving you a hard time or teasing you. Uh, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me. I was curious. Uh, that whole, that, the reason why I went there is because, I mean, there was, I wanted, you know, there was junior Olympics and AAU and all that stuff. But the reason why I went to that instead is because I, I actually wanted to actually like do an event with my home and, you know, actually get to know the people. Like I always ran against them for so long, but I never really got to know who they were. And then, you know, since I had the chance to actually be a team with them and actually get to know who they are and, you know, where they where they came from. I mean, the whole whole thing was nice and it was very fun. But, yeah, Justin, he did give me a hard time. He still gives me a hard time, too. Oh, really? But, you know, he, he always jokes and says, you know, Kenny, you're slow. And, you know, Kenny, like I do something great. And then he, he always has something to, you know, to say. Uh, but. You know, I like it. I've always uh, had friends like that where, you know, you know, they don't praise you all the time. You just be like, you, you know, you ain't that, you ain't this. You know, right. Just, Keep you humble. humble. Yeah, it keeps me humble. So, but oh, that's yeah. fun. I uh, love that. I remember um, I, I did the senior spotlight, too. It was really fun. And I just like it's interesting getting out of that zone where you're not necessarily competing against someone. You're actually competing with them. So yeah. that's cool that you mentioned that. That's awesome. 
But uh, yeah, Justin uh, and all the other guys, like we got, we got, uh, we got close, and you know, now we still text and you know, we Skype or whatever. Uh, but it was a good experience, and it was great to actually know who the people I was running be- against before, and you know, com- uh, yeah, it was it was a good experience. Cool. Um, Justin, in particular, I only got a chance to ever talk to him once. Uh, we were down at nationals with them, but, uh, he, he seems like a great guy. Um, and I'm a little bitter though, because, so I was assistant coach last year for Arrowhead and in the four by, uh, one and four by two, we took second to those guys both times, both times to Muskego. And they even set the state record in the four by two. So, um, but he's. They run with uh, a couple of my buddies on the lacrosse track team. So anyway, um, but no, that's cool. And I want I want high school athletes to be able to see that, like, you know, you, you're not always just fierce enemies against people you run against. Yeah. Like, it's a community of people. It's fun, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's what I want to try and get across. Um, so cool. And uh, let's see. Let's move on from high school a little bit. So now, all right, let's talk a little bit about uh, outdoor. What are... What are your goals for outdoor? I know you said on flow track you wanted to do sub twenty indoor, but um, I mean, what are your goals for for outdoor as you recoup now and, and start training real soon? Uh, I mean, I think we train uh, next week, but um, goals. I mean, I want to run a forty three something uh, outdoors in the four, and for sure a nineteen, a high nineteen, or maybe a mid nineteen. I mean. I'm aiming. I'm aiming high because, like I said, uh, I feel like I got the potential to actually do it. And I mean, I'm only a freshman, so you know, if I don't do it this year, then I, you know, always got the years after. But yeah, those oh, are my sure. goals. Just uh, dominate. I mean, our first meet is in Arkansas on the 15th, and I hear that's a very nice track. So you know, I'm hoping to see if I can actually like at least get a 44 and a high 19 on that first me but we'll see nice well with how many times you've surprised us and done so well that it wasn't even surprising anymore i'm sure that you know sky's the limit for you man absolutely um another question when you continue to run on the collegiate or d1 or maybe even pro level um wherever things go do you feel like you'll have some sort of allegiance to uh the midwest or wisconsin um, or the, the, you know, the area that you came out of, um, even when, you know, you're miles ahead of that at this point or in the near future. I mean, yeah, I, I'll make sure to know where I came from and make sure to always come back home. And, um, yeah, I mean, I know, yeah, I definitely will. I, I won't forget any of that. Um, whatever happens, you know, I always make sure that I know where I came from, um, I mean, right on. Yeah, I mean, Wisconsin. Uh, it's it was it was a very important part of my life. Well, good. Do you ever think you'd coach someday? Honestly, I think I will eventually. Actually, yeah. when I when I started doing track, I never thought of it. But this year, just for so how much stuff I just learned this month from you know some other coaches and. You know, I'm actually learning the track and field world myself right now. Because, like I said, um, in high school and in middle school and elementary, like, I never paid attention to, you know, all the track and field guys and all that. I just ran because I like to run. I like to run. So I'm learning, like, all this new stuff now, you know, about all these different peoples. I mean, obviously I knew about some of them, but I didn't know about all of them. And then, you know, uh, college. And, yeah, so I think I, at the end, of all my career and all that stuff, I think coaching will be a possibility. I mean, I kind of like the sound of helping kids progress and all that. Nice. I can tell you from my experience personally, I was only able to do it for a season um, back at the high school level before I, I moved away from my old high school. Um, it, I mean, life-changing. It's so cool. I mean, I even got to go coach with, with my old coach himself. And mm-hmm. um, being able to sort of pass on what you learn is, is just incredible. I mean, I hope for you that's a long ways away and that you have plenty of stuff uh, yeah. to do in the meantime, lots of races to win in the meantime. Mm-hmm. But um, in, in speaking of those, those athletes, what's uh, what's some advice 
to high school kids that look to you, see what you're doing, and think, God, someday I want to be at that level. Like that's what I want to be doing. That's what I want to be running. Um, what are some things that you would want to tell them? Whether it's advice for you know track or training, or or just like uh, mental prep or emotional stuff. Like what would you tell high school kids? Uh, I say that? the number one thing is, I mean, listen to what your coach is doing. I mean, you know, a lot of high school kids are just there, but if they actually want to be great, they better, they need to listen to their coach. And even some of the things that the coach might be, you know, doing that's crazy and you think it's crazy, I would sit down and talk to him, ask, you should ask him or her, you know, what is this doing and how is this going to help me? And then, you know, the coach will explain it. I just think you need to actually need to understand what your coach is doing instead of just, uh, just going with it. You know, if you truly want to know what's going on, um, but yeah, just make sure to take it seriously and, you know, don't do anything dumb like be playing basketball all the time and, you know, rolling your ankle because uh, I, I used to uh, start playing basketball and I have a friend that's still at my high school that always ends up hurting himself or rolling his ankle because he keeps on playing basketball in between, you know, meets and all that stuff. So, I mean, if you want to be serious and all that, uh, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, just stop. But I'm just saying, you know, limit all that stuff so you can make sure you stay healthy. For sure. No, that's that's funny. So uh, my partner, Tim, Tim Huckey, the guy who reached out to you, he's uh, so he was on the team with me at Arrowhead. He was state champion in the 800. Um, we actually had a little bit of a scare. I'm pretty sure it was the year that we won state because he think he was trying to be a gym class hero or something like that. And he yeah. uh, he kind of rolled his ankle a little bit playing basketball. Uh, but no, that just makes me laugh. That's really good advice. One thing that that I want your take on. Um, one thing I would say to high school kids: I did not, I didn't sleep enough. Like I went to bed too late, and high school, of course, starts super early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I only got like six and a half, six hours of sleep or something like that most nights, and that I just don't think that's enough. How how much do you have to sleep in order to feel completely rested for meets and stuff? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I have a hard time doing that, but I know I need, like, you know, I mean, there's some days I stay up late, but that's because, you know, I have homework or uh, other stuff. But um, I think you need, you know, obviously eight hours of sleep. I I mean, after a hard workout and all that stuff, you need to make sure to get all the, you know, eat right and get all the nutrients in. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can you can get all that, but it won't matter if you actually have the right amount of sleep. Like, if you don't get the right amount of sleep, like, all of that's going to be, not, you know, worthless. But, you know, you got to make sure to make your body recover, help it recover even better by getting better sleep. Heck yeah, man. Um, and again, you know, the high schoolers that are going to be watching you, um, they might not want to believe that or might not want to hear it, but it's good advice. It's true. So... Mm-hmm. I don't want to take up too much of your time. It's been about a half hour, but um, before we go, uh, while we have you, is there anything that you want to throw out there, say to the world? What does Kenny Bednarik want to say to the world as he goes into outdoor season and uh, and maybe tries to get redemption for two, the 200? Or is there anything you want to put out there? Um, I'm just going to say that they need to make sure that they're watching because I'm going to do something crazy. Yeah. Uh, Heck yeah, man. I have no doubts about it. So that wraps up the first uh, podcast, the first show, first episode um, with PB Track and Field. Kenny, thank you so much for joining us today. You're more than welcome uh, back on the show anytime. Hopefully we can catch up again once you start going to some more meets and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we won't even get the chance. You might be getting interviews from millions and millions of people or something like that. Who knows? uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Best of luck to you the rest of the season, and hopefully we'll be talking in the future. Mm-hmm, hopefully, uh, but I like what I like what you have here. This is this is good. So, but thanks for having me. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate that. All right. All right. Uh, have a good night. You too. Later, man. Bye.